Metabox just released a video showcasing their planned update to the UI UX experience with Metabox. This will roll out first of all to the paid for version and the light version will get it later on down the line. One of the key reasons why I've never really been a big Metabox user is not from a functionality point of view, but from an actual UI point of view. I didn't really like the way it operated. So I was keen to see how they've done this. They've changed it drastically. And when I watched the video, I kind of thought, I don't really like the direction they've gone in. It's gone a very kind of Gutenberg way. But after trying it for 10, 15 minutes, it actually makes a lot of sense. Even if you don't like Gutenberg, the way this works is a lot smoother and a lot nicer. So what I want to show you is the alpha build of this. This is not something you want to be installing yourself on a production site. This is just for you to test it out. So let's jump over and take a look at how it works. You're going to need to make sure you've got the full version of Metabox installed and you have the Metabox Builder plugin or add-on included as well. Then you can upload the alpha version of the new experience. I've already gone ahead and done that. I'll link to everything in the description below so you can test this out and find out more about it yourself. So once all that is installed and set up, head over to Metabox and we're going to go into our custom fields. I've already created just a typical custom field setup, nothing special here, just some additional post fields. But you can immediately see how this is very, very different to what we've had in the past. And also very different if you're coming over from something like Jet Engine, Advanced Custom Fields, those types of tools, this is gonna be a very different experience. So first of all, let's take a quick look at it. Let's get rid of what I've got here and let's start with a completely fresh slate. Let's quickly break the interface down so you can see the basic options we have and how we can start building up our meta fields into a fully featured meta field setup. So first of all, we've got the options in the top left. The plus will open up all of the different kinds of meta fields that we can insert. You can search inside here. So you can see we can search. It's pretty rapid. It's a nice, smooth experience, which is really nice. And like I say, this is an alpha build, so you know this is good to see this in this kind of position to start off with. And we'll take a look at some of the different meta fields we can add in in a moment. Then you've got your structure, which is what you used to see. And so you can see this is where I'm talking about a very Gutenberg experience. So let's close that down. Across the top, you can then name the actual meta field group that you're creating. The main area is where we add in our fields themselves. And then on the right-hand side, we'll have different context-based options, but this is your overall setup for this particular meta field group settings. So you can see we can choose where we want them to be set up. So this, in this case, is a post type. All the options are there. You're not really getting more options and more tools and functions and things. It's just wrapping it up in a different way of operating. So, but you can see you can associate these meta fields with your post types, taxonomies, and all those kinds of useful things. Then you can choose the post type. You can add rules. You've got settings inside you for the position and so on. So all the things you used to see in. You've also got some options then underneath the advanced. In this example, there's not much here. It's just more sort of do with CSS classes and so on. But there will be different options here based upon the context of the actual field that we're editing or creating. You can also set things to go into their own custom table, which is something I want to explore in a little bit more detail. My belief is this is more akin to CCTs or custom content types you have with Jet Engine. So I want to take a look at that and see what impact that can have on speed and so on. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to cover Metabox in more detail in this old videos. Okay, so we've seen the options at the right hand side. Now let's go and add a field in. So you can add a field from here in a kind of typical fashion. You can click and you get again a very Gutenberg centric experience. Again, you can search here. So for example, type in date and as you can see, it is very, very quick. This is a blank site, so there may be an impact upon things later on down the line if you have a more complex site with more plugins and things installed. We'll have to wait and see. Or you can come over to the options here and click inside here. So let's start off with something really simple like a text box. So you'll notice now that this is consistent. It stays there while we're working, which again is cool. One of the things I like to see, I can just click X to close that down, expand out my list view, and you can see this shows me all the different fields we have, currently only one. You also notice we get the three dots. We can click on there and we get some additional options to add fields before and after, to duplicate and to move up and down or to remove things. You'll also notice you get the same options here in this little sort of pop-out. So if you prefer to work this way, it's pretty cool you've got the options there. Obviously, we only got one item here, so let's just go and add something else in. Let's go to the plus. Let's say we want to add in something like a WYSIWYG editor. We'll click and add that in. Let's add some images. Do a file upload. There we go. So we're now starting to build things up 
close this down, open up our view, you can see everything is listed there. We can drag and drop these to position them exactly as we want in a nice simple fashion. You can also come over to any of these items and you can use the up and down arrows here, or you can drag things around in the way you used to. I appreciate the kind of way this is set up because when you start to get longer lists of meta fields, it can be a little bit annoying to try to move things around. Having multiple different ways in which you can do it is nice, a nice experience. This is what I'm saying. To start off with, I kind of didn't like the look of it, but actually working with it makes a lot of sense. Okay, so let's just select this text field to start off with. Now, if we take a look at the right hand side, we can change our label. We'll put in title. You can see it updates in real time. It'll generate an ID. You can set default values. You can set a text limit. I like the way that actually interacts. So you can see we get this little counter there that says how many you're allowed to put in. Your appearance, you can control this. If you want to add a tooltip in, you can set your tooltips on here. You can choose what you want. So once we add that in, you'll see we get the little information icon. You can change that to something custom if you want to, or you can choose a different one from the set of icons. You can see, choose the position, any label descriptions you want to add in, placeholders, all those kinds of cool things. So that's pretty nippy. We'll close that down. You can set how many columns you want. You can set your validation rules inside you. So again, all the same kind of options are here. And again, like I said, there's a lot of things to like about what Metabox brings to the table. Now I've got the all-in-one version of Metabox. This basically installs all the extra add-ons. So all those options, you may have a stripped back version. You may not have all these options depending upon what you choose to install and not install. Again, to say, if we come into advanced, you can see this gives us more options now, different to what we saw earlier on. These are more specific to actually having meta fields inside you. All pretty cool. I like the look of that. Same thing goes if we go to the WYSIWYG editor, you've got all the same kind of options here. Context sensitive based upon what you actually include. Again, we can add in those character limits. We may say 500, adds it in nice and neat. So it's very, very simple, very clean layout. I do like the just ability to be able to move things around, add new fields in. So we'd say we had one before, we'll say we want to put something like a date time picker, and there you go, that's how easy it is. You can select it, make your changes, whatever you want on there reposition it here, all pretty cool. Everything you're used to seeing is already here. It's just they've wrapped it up in a much nicer interface. And like I say, whether you're a good and big user or not, I think this actually just works a lot nicer. This is more akin to working with forms in a typical form builder you'd see where you can drag and drop the different form fields around. This is doing the same kind of thing just with meta fields. So it's a nice experience. Now there's some other useful little options here if you want to duplicate things. Let's come over and do a search for group. Let's add a group in. I had a couple of subfields inside here. Let's add a text area. And we'll add something like a Google Map. Doesn't really matter too much what's in there. So you can see that's created our group. Let's close that down, come back over here. You can see it shows us how this looks, indents them. So a nice visual way of seeing things. If we choose this group and we duplicate it, it duplicates it and it duplicates the content inside there. And you can still drag and drop these around inside their groups and you can drag them out of their groups. So full drag and drop functionality is included throughout the entire editor. What are my thoughts? As someone that didn't really like the way that Metabox actually works and seeing this and thinking this is not the direction I think they should go in, actually trying it out, which I would recommend you do if you're a Metabox user on a test site, not on a live site, I think you'll probably feel the same. It is just a much quicker, much more intuitive way of working. The drag and drop, the copying, the duplication, the inserting, all those kinds of things makes everything feel like it's just at your fingertips, which takes away the kind of headache of going to various different parts of the overall screen to do certain things. Is it perfect? No. Um, there are still a few little things inside you that I think need to be tidied up, but I don't think there's anything particularly major. So fingers crossed, this won't be long before they roll this out on the actual live version of this, and you'll be able to download it as part of the whole setup and we'll start working in this yourself. But if you're a Metabox user, what are your thoughts? Do you think this is a cool way of working or do you just like, nope, it's not for me. I like the original way of working. If you are coming from something like Advanced Custom Fields or Jet Engine or Toolset or anything like that, what are your thoughts? Totally different way of working, 
But do you think this is a good way of working or is it a step backwards in some way? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now I'll link to all the different pieces of information that I've got and the link to the actual file itself if you want to test this out yourself in the description down below. If you want to see my recent video on Metabox Lite, the free version, you can check that out here. As always, my name's Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.